Hi, it's Laura. We're following the paper trail today. I have the next in the Bird Abode series. This is the September Birdhouse, and this one is called School Days. It's a little red schoolhouse birdhouse, and this school since we've got the school bell up at the top, and this birdhouse is po this schoolhouse is positively bursting at the seams because, in reality. When you take off the roof, it is the classic exploding box, which has been around since the Victorian times. And inside, I've got different levels. We've got this inside section that has these fold-over tags inside. They still need some pattern paper added to them. They've got little stars. <coughs> Excuse me. Then we've got the pencil tags. These are also folded over so that you can add photos and such to the inside and to the back side. So the pencil can complete with its eraser, etc. We'll show you how to make those. And then here towards the back, we have these full depth um, box pockets that have four by six tags in them that can also be embellished. Um, and I've got five tags in each of those. So lots of real estate as is typical with these birdhouses, but super fun, super quick, and super easy. So let's go ahead and close things back up for the time being in our schoolhouse, and let me show you how we go about getting this put together. So you're going to start out with, um, and the pattern and such is available over on my blog at lauradenisondesigns.com. So we're going to start out with a six and a half inch square, a five and a half inch square of chipboard, and then our side pieces. <coughs> this uh, square is actually one of the pattern papers that is in the paper collection I'm using, which is the Kaiser Craft Class Act. It's the name of this paper collection. It's um, a real cute one. So. Fortunately, with Kaiser Craft, it already comes six and a half, so I don't didn't have to cut it from a larger sheet. So we've got a six and a half inch square. I'm going to take my base piece of chipboard, and it's going to be attached to the back. I've already done a score line around each of the four sides at half an inch in, so I just center this piece in between um, those score lines. And I got quite a few strips of score tip because I am going to be attaching things over the top of this, those other pockets, the pencil pockets and those ruler pockets on the inside. So I want this to be attached well. So then I'm just going to go ahead and center it in between those score lines. And then the next thing I will do um, is take my side pieces. Now I've already added score tape to those and I'm going to be attaching those on each of the four sides, allowing a gap that's roughly equivalent to two thicknesses of the chipboard. So if my chipboard, if I put two layers together, that's about how big I want my gap to be. Now these can be glued on. I'm um, using score tape or any other um, strong aggressive kind of tape. So I'm allowing that gap to be there and I'm going to apply all four sides. Now these chipboard pieces, I have already inked my edges because my edges of my chipboard will be exposed in the final project. So I went ahead and inked those to begin with. I'm going to attach those on all four sides and then after we get all of these attached, we're going to trim away the corners. Now if you need to make a shim out of some scrap chipboard um, so that you know how deep you need that um, gap to be, by all means go ahead and use that. I've done this so many times I can eyeball it pretty easily. But if you're, you're still new or have a hard time eyeballing it, by all means make a little shim out of some scrap chipboard. So here I'm just, you can do this with scissors as well, I'm just cutting away the excess of the corner. So that's going to be on the inside. So now it's on the outside pieces to make them be that little red schoolhouse. I have some red chipboard that I'm adding that are 
and the length is a half an inch shorter so that my piece that's going to cover over these joints is attaching directly to the chipboard. So I'm cutting this about a half an inch short. So I'm going to attach this to all four of my outside walls. Bring that up. Attach that down. I'm going to do that on all four of them. I have these all pre-prepped with the tape on here. So you don't have to sit here and watch me put tape on. So again, line it up along one side, stick the other four sides down. Two more to go. Then we're also going to do the same sort of thing on the inside. Let's get this outside on. And then I've cut strips that are going to cover the joints, these outside joints. And I'm using a pattern paper for those. And those, rather than it being a square that we trim down, they're just the strips. You can then cover over your bottom if you choose to. Um, I didn't because it's really never shows. <laughs> so I was lazy. Okay, line up here at the corner. Line up the side and stick it down. Okay, so I've got these strips that I'm going to attach on all four of these intersections. Now typically I would put tape um, right to my chipboard and because I want to do it on each side of my joint but I've got it applied on these strips here and that's so I've got it applied this piece will go on this side this is on the side of the joint and then this will where it overlaps will stick it down and it was just easier and then I don't have to mess around with trimming so this is going to overhang onto my bottom by about half an inch and then it overlaps onto my red and they can just overlap. This is not such heavy paper that overlapping is a problem. If you were using a really heavy cardstock then I would say go ahead and um, take that off. Now I need to peel this off. Did I? I just thought of something. Did I peel it off of here? <laughs> I hope so. You want to peel it off all of those three places. Let me see if I did or didn't. I didn't. Hmm. Quick fix. This is just a thin spatula or electronic cutter. See, I forgot to cut it off and uh, pull this paper off of there. Then I can stick it right back down. That was quick. Easy fix. So I'm going to peel that off first so I don't forget to do it this time. Peel it off of these strips. But you always want to cover over both sides of a joint like that. Now I could have cut these all at an angle but it's not going to show so I'm not going to mess with it but that's up to you. Still overlaps by that approximate half an inch and then covers over into the top. So this is on the outside. So I'm going to just gently, as always when you're folding paper, do it gently and don't force it. By having that nice gap, it doesn't put as much stress on the paper and your paper is less likely, likely to crack. So that gives us the outside of our schoolhouse. So now we're going to move on to the inside where I've got um, papers cut that are a quarter of an inch shorter just so I didn't run into the joint. And so we'll go ahead and get these all put onto the inside walls of the birdhouse. And these are going to attach in the same way as the outside ones. And then we'll start adding our pockets. So again, these are just a quarter of an inch shorter, whereas the ones on the outside were a half inch shorter. And this is covering over the edge of my paper. 
gets a bit cumbersome because this is pretty large. So make sure you have a nicely cleared off desk in order <laughs> that you don't knock everything off your table. All right. Let me stick that down. And one last one. Then we're going to, um, after we do this, we're going to put dimensional pockets on the outside on all four of the walls. And that way you can add multiple tags with embellishments on them rather than it being flat pockets. Okay, so we've got the black um, cardstock covering all the inside walls. And again, everything folds up very nicely. Now for the pockets, all the dimensions are given <coughs> in the pattern, but you're on each side you're going to have double score lines. I went ahead and trimmed or pun edge punched this with which looks like kind of a notebook style punch and I've trimmed the corners out. Now you're going to fold the one closest to the center back and then fold it forward at the one at the edge so that it forms that kind of Z shape. And you'll do that on all three sides. And that way, the punched edge is what attaches it, because I've got the tape. I put the tape on before I punched it, so that I could be closer to the edge and I didn't have to work around the punch. But you can see how that will give us some dimension. Now I'm going to attach the one along the bottom first, and I'm going to come up about an eighth of an inch from the edge of the black, and I want it to be as close to center. If you need to measure, that's fine. Otherwise, you can just eyeball it. And then I'm going to slide this along to where the corners just touch up to each other. So let's start with this one. And I'm going to bring it down. And it typically should be in from this edge about an eighth of an inch as well. So then we'll peel it back off of this side and do the same on this side. And again, around an eighth of an inch, you know, on each of these sides and on the bottom. But you can see how that makes a nice deep pocket. So if you have embellishments on your tags, they're not going to be squished into the pocket and potentially tear the pocket. So giving it a little bit of depth. We got plenty of space inside. So let's attach one more. We won't do all four of them, but let's attach one more so you can see how that goes. <coughs> Excuse me, my allergies have been just through the roof this year. So I'm just going to try to get it through the whole video without sneezing and it didn't work. So attach it eighth of an inch up. And then bring that so that those corners meet. Make sure it's straight along the side. And then do the same thing over on this side. Let's stick that down. Oh heck, let's just go ahead and get all four of them on. Then they're done. They're all punched and ready to go. And then we're going to move on to our um, pencil pockets. Those are my favorite of this whole project. This little pencil tag pocket. Alright, this would be perfect um, for... I'm going to send this one down to my niece for her daughter who is a kindergartner this year. So this will be a great way for um, them to hold all of my great niece's uh, first year school memories in. All right, and one last one. Oh, I didn't do the last one um, because I wanted to show you where the score lines were and then you will trim out the corners on those score lines. Should have showed this one first. Um, and then punch those edges. So I'm just going to trim it out right on those score lines. And then I would punch the edges and fold and attach. You don't have to punch them. I just thought it, it kind of gave some interesting detail for it. I also then have, in this paper collection, it has some um, 
looks like a green chalkboard. Now I know kids in schools don't use chalkboards anymore. <laughs> they all tend to use um, write-on boards or whiteboards. In some schools they even have you know, the um, ones that are attached to the teacher's computer. Um, but there's some schools who still have chalkboards. So I've got cut pieces for out of that chalkboard paper in this collection, added it to some craft card stock, and then these pieces are going to be added as embellishment to these pockets on the um, these side pockets. So we can add those onto those three. You can add further embellishments then as well. Just want to make sure the scientific notation writing on there is correct. I was helping my daughter who's in junior high now with science homework and it was about chemistry and periodic tables and I'm like, oh, I should be okay with that. I took two years of chemistry in high school. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> Frightening. Frightening. So, all right, so we put the pockets on all four sides. And then here in the center, we're going to cut a piece of the black cardstock, which I neglected to do. Dimensions and such, as I say, are all in the uh, the pattern. So you're going to cut a square that fits in this inside, and we're going to score on this half an inch on each side, all four sides. So we're going to go half an inch, half an inch, half an inch and half an inch. And again, we're going to cut the corners away, but I'm going to cut these corners at a slight angle so that they tab, so that when we create sleeves to slip over them, much like my stack the deck binding system, they will slip inside easily because these are going to act as fins that we will glue sleeve pocket sleeves to. So we'll fold those four fins up and then we're going to attach score tape on the back in between those score lines and we will attach this then down to, I'm just going to run four of them across make sure it's nicely adhered because I'm going to put yet another one on top, on top of it I can peel those all off. And I can center this. Again, I'm just going to eyeball center it on there. And attach that down. So then we've got these four fins going all the way around. So next up, I've already got three of them made and I'm going to make one here in class. Next up we're going to be making these pencil sleeves and they start out with just a black cardstock sleeve and then we're going to add strips and pieces to them to create the pencil pockets. So first you're going to have your strip that is scored so you have a half inch tab on one side and this section here it gets scored down in the middle and then I'm going to tab my corners just like we did on the fins so that they're at a slight angle. Fold that over. So then I'm taking and doing folding at each of those score lines. I'm going to attach my tab then to the body and create a sleeve. And so it's hollow. Um, next up we have the pieces. So we have a piece kind of a reddish pink color that's part of this paper collection. So I'm going to attach it and that will be <coughs> close to the bottom centered attach that on that X is the eraser. Then we have, this is kind of a gray uh, paper that's in the collection as well. 
could also use a metallic, allowing about a sixteenth of an inch gap. And then the gold, which has also kind of got a wood graining to it, that's also part of this paper collection. Now to get these little lines in here like on a pencil, what I've done is I've scored in an inch on each side, folded it and inked it and then flattened it back out again. So that creates the little pocket. Now I also have taken a strip of black cardstock that is folded in half. That's going to be the tag to go inside. Let's see, make sure I've cut this down. This needs to only be five inches long. So I need to trim this down. I thought that looked long. I trimmed the other three. So then what I'm going to do is up at this top edge, I'm going to just take my scissors and make some shallow scallop cuts. Kind of how like when a pencil sharpened it has. Now I do want to ink that edge where I just cut it. I went ahead and pre-inked all of these. So that gives that scalloped edge. <coughs> I'm going to run some glue or tape right along that edge. And then I have a two inch piece of cardstock, of a craft cardstock, and I'm going to attach this to where this top edge is about a quarter of an inch in. And I'm going to attach it on and then I'm going to take I'm just going to use this grid that's on my mat and find the center point and I'm going to cut from that point on the side to the center point of that cardstock. You can also mark this with a pencil and then cut it with your scissors if you feel more comfortable doing that. So that's created the point of my pencil and then I'm just going to take some of um, a black ink and I'm just going to kind of blacken the tip to make the pencil tip. I'm then going to attach this pencil tag piece to the actual tag itself. It is going to extend beyond the top of the tag. As you can see, it extends beyond. But then that is the pencil tags that then slip down inside the pockets. So I have the four pockets that are going to attach onto these fins. And so um, I found it's easiest for most people to do this with glue. You have a little bit more working time. The tape, once it grabs, it grabs. Slip it down. I like to hold it vertically. That way I'm not tight up against my... And then it flops and does all that it needs to be because you're not interfering with the joint. Don't need a lot of glue. Too much glue and it'll ooze. So try to not do too much. So the red part goes towards the inside and the red part's down. So we'll get all four of these attached on. And they just slip right over, squish it on. Slip it down over. that down and then I can go in and slip my pencil tags down inside each of those pockets. Well this one's not completely stuck down. I won't stick it in all the way and fix that after I get this video done. So the pencils all fit down inside like so. Next up we have some more sleeves that we've created out of some ruler paper and this is done the same way it's it's got a half inch tab on one end and the remainder part is then folded in half and we're going to do the same sort of thing we're going to 
tab my corners, put some tape on them, and I'm going to have the little sleeves. So I need to cut another, pre-cut everything except these. So whatever the dimension is of those, you're going to cut it an inch larger to allow for the half an inch on each side. And then you score the half inch down on each of the sides. So the half inch, oops, I cut that one too small. I didn't cut it. I cut it at the half inch, not the three quarters. It's one of those kind of days. It's called the mad rush to get it. Did I cut this one the same? Oh no. Thought I cut it wrong again. Wouldn't put it past me to do that. Okay, so I cut half an inch on each of the four corners, or each of the four sides, and then at the four corners I'm going to trim up that square out. Oh, I meant to cut that at a tab angle. So cut it at a tab. Now you can either attach this and then attach the pockets, or you can attach the pockets first and then attach it down um, onto your, your piece. It's really kind of, it's whichever you prefer. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call this is flat. Stick the tape. Now this one is going to be applied on the diagonal, and I sometimes it's it's just easier to see when it's just this piece. In the pattern, I show it with these attached on there. Either way it will work, but sometimes it's just a little bit easier to see where the diagonal is. Now I'm just going to eyeball it, but you can measure where the center points are to line those up. I'm just going to be brave and eyeball it on there. So those are, um, as you can see, that is what in quilting I, we call on point. Again, glue on each side of the fin. Slip these fins of pattern paper on. do all four of them and then then we'll be ready to raise the roof on the school okay let's slip that doesn't really matter but put that on that same side so there's those four and then we've got the little pockets, or the little tags that are fold over tags that slip down inside. And I then will just punch some stars that I will put um, at the top. So I just use four of the primary colors of cardstock that I have. I saved the red and the blue for on the outside. I'm using the blue as the trim around my windows, so or the navy blue. So I'm using these other four colors. Um, and those just slip in the pockets like so. So as you can see down inside, it all folds up and stays up inside. You can actually put a little memorabilia piece down in the very center, uh, maybe a little apple or something like that. So let's go ahead and set this aside while we go ahead and get our roof made. Let me bring the roof over. So we've got our gable ends here out of the same pattern paper that I used on the base. This is a basil paper that I've got as my roof. So you can see there's some edge of the under roof there. And then we'll also make the bell tower. I, I cut a pencil, a standard length pencil, into five sections. The one with the eraser I'm using as the perch. And then these four other four pieces are used as the column. 
on the bell tower. So let's go ahead and get our roof made. Now to do this, you're going to need some construction strips cut from craft card stock or some other card stock. Um, <coughs> and then they're scored in half down the length. These are three quarter inch strips with quarter inch score tape down each side. The gables are cut from a rectangular piece and you're going to measure up half an inch and you're going to find the center line and you're just going to connect the dots to cut those off. That All that information is in the pattern and then you're going to have some half inch strips that will be the side pieces. So I'm going to just cut some little half inch sections of this that are going to be my construction strips at those corners. So I'm going to, alternating the gable and the straight side, attach those with seams that butt up to each other because these strips are on the inside. You don't need to allow a gap. So we're going to do that at all four corners. those. Let's do it on each side of this. Then we're also going to be attaching construction strips that will attach the roof to the gabled ends in the side. So um, you may find it's easier to go ahead and attach those strips right now while it's still flat rather than it's three-dimensional. So I'm going to cut these to the right length. I'm also going to cut, fold them in half and cut them at an angle to reduce some of the bulk. And I'm going to place these on there so that the fold is lining up with the edge of the chipboard. Now you may want to wait to do the sides until we have the gable ends attached on so that uh, we're not covering over so that we can just cover over the, uh, the corners with the pieces. So I'll show you here what I'm talking about in just a sec. Cut them at the angles. And attach these to those gable ends. that's what's going to attach our roof down onto our ends and sides. So let's go ahead and attach these guys and then we can attach, apply them to the sides. So if I do this correctly I should be able to just fold these pieces on top and it can stay flat and butt right up. So then that's going to be what attaches. We do need to add some of those construction strips along these side pieces. And again, you're just lining up the fold with the edge of the chipboard. But that way, by putting it on afterwards, we can take it all the way to the ends and cover over those corners we just put on. Next up, we want to construct our roof. Get this last piece on. All right. So those are all set to prepare, are all prepared to be attached to our roof. So with our roof, we have two pieces of chipboard again. I've inked my edges in advance. And since this is a directional paper, I want to make sure that the top of the paper is towards the peak of the roof. And we're going to attach these that down to our 
chipboard roof pieces in the same way that we did it on the sides and such. And then we're going to flip them over and on the inside we're going to use a construction strip at the peak of the roof to hold those two roof pieces together. this over. These are a little bit long so I'm going to take my craft knife and trim them off slightly. All right. So again, those are the two we want together. So we're going to butt those seams up because again, it's on the inside. So we can do that with a an abutting seam. We don't have to have the gap unless we're doing it on the outside. Apply one side, lining it up with the edge of the chipboard, peel it off, make sure everything's lined up, and flip it over, and that creates... Now because this is black, if you want to go in and ink in there, so it doesn't stand out quite so much. So now we're going to be applying our roof onto our our, our uh, gable ends and sides. And you got about an eighth of an inch in on each side here and here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach this down on one side first and then I can pull the other side. That way I can get it straight. So go ahead and set this down that approximately one eighth inch in. Do the same thing over on this side. At that end, I mean, and then this side as well. I hate it when the paper backing doesn't want to come off. So again, if I hold this up a little bit, I don't go over on top of the seam, and then I can attach this one down, give them all way around a good rub and then I can just flip it over this way and attach the other roof down. Keep it nice and easy to get everything all lined up. Get it wonky, get the first one on straight, stick it down, check the other side, stick it down on the last side and that has created our roof that goes then slips down on top of our box and the box itself will go up that half an inch to the edge of where the roof is. So we've got our roof on. So next up we want to do our little bell tower that's up at the top. So we're essentially going to do the same sort of thing making this tiny little roof. So we've got all of our little pieces for that. sure I got the right ones. Yeah. So we've got our two little gable ends that we've cut the same way and I've covered them with the red cardstock and then we've got our two roof pieces and the two roof ends where this wraps around here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my roof pieces and I'm going to use some little construction strips. It's always a good idea to save all these little scraps so we can put those on. So we'll do this one in the center. Now I've got a trimmed piece that I've trimmed it down towards just a quarter of an inch on each side to do these side pieces. So I've got this, that's not, here's the one that I've trimmed to be very narrow so that I can do that for my pieces along the side since those are only little quarter inch strips. And that way it doesn't hang over. It can hang over and trim, you can just trim it too. I just trimmed this one in advance. And you can just take some of your scraps and trim it down. You don't have to do a whole strip because you don't need but these two little pieces. So 
So we're going to attach those down like so. And then I'm going to take some of my, one of my wider strips and I'm going to cut it the whole length. Tab my ends. I'm going to stick it down, lining up with the edge of the chipboard. And then I'm going to go in at each of these joints. I'm going to notch it out so that it can fold around. As you can see, because that way it can attach then to this piece. So if I take and butt up one of these sides with the center at the point, and then I can peel this side off. Do the same thing. Let me get the piece put on this side first before I get too far, because then it's hard to get off. So if I attach this guy on there. And then bring it out the center. And I want there to be a little bit of a tab here. Probably shouldn't cut it quite so much an angle. So I'm cutting that fairly straight and then the angle towards the thicker part. So I at least have a little bit of tab. Okay, so now I can attach that to where it butts right up. And I can do the tabs at each end as well and bring that around the corner. Line that up on that end so it lines up and wraps around. And I'll do the same thing down at this end to create that roof. Attach that, wrap it around. So that creates that little roof piece. I then have a strip of my black. I've already got the tape on my roof pieces. And I'm going to wrap it from one side over to the other side. So I've got my roof covered all on there. I can trim off the excess. So that gives me my little roof piece. I've also got a piece that attaches onto the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and put um, my construction strips all the way around so that this can be attached. But before I do that, I'm going to take this piece and I'm going to cut or punch two holes in it. Then I'm going to take just some narrow ribbon core jute um, and loop it through those two ribbons as well as through um, my little bell, which is hiding. But let me show you on this one. So as you can see up in there, hopefully, yes, you can. See how there's a little piece of, of jute that loops through the, the, um, the loop on the bell? And then I tie it to where it's on the inside. So rather than going through all that. So tie the bow or the bell onto this. And then I'm going to put my construction strips around and attach this piece. Or you can glue it in place as well, um, whichever you prefer. And so then the bell is hanging down from our little roof assembly. To create our bottom piece, we also have, we have, two with little notches cut out so it fits on the roof and two that are solid. Now we want to have a half inch tab along the top and so we're going to mount these on here, attach these on here so that the bottom edge is lining up with the edge of our paper and we're going to allow about a quarter of an inch at this end and these are on the outside so we want to have gaps between it, because there's red papers on the outside, we want to have the gaps. And 
and then those points line up on that bottom. So allow that gap of two equal to two thicknesses of the chipboard. And you can hear my dog snoring away in the background, I'm sure. I'm trying to get this done before the bus comes home. <laughs> there we go. Now this last one, I'm going to place it but not stick it down because I want to mark it with my pencil. Mark it where it goes and that's where I'm going to trim off the edge of my paper but I'm not sticking it down yet. I'm going to come down on this other end and stick it down onto this little tab and this way my tab is tucked underneath the main part instead of being on top. So I'm going to come down here, allow for my gap, and then I'm going to fold this all up and wrap and bring this guy over so that it lines up with the fold inside. And that way my tab, that little shorty piece, is inside, and this joint is right at the, the corner. Um, I'm going to then trim off at an angle, trim or take wedges out of the four corners of this half inch that's sticking up above. So that I have the chipboard top piece is going to slip down in there. These will all fold over. You can actually fold them over easiest to start with. Have taper glue on here, slip this down inside, and attaches to those tabs like so. Go ahead and trim out the excess and then have a piece that fits over the top of it and that creates your top and bottom of your bell tower. You're going to take your pencil and your pencil should be approximately seven and a half inches long, an average pencil is, and if you cut it into five inch and a half sections, and that's counting from the end of the eraser to the end down here, cut those in inch and a half sections. I use my craft knife and just very carefully kept rolling and working my way around it. Use my scissors a little bit. Um, if you have some sort of small saw, that would also work great. Um, but just take your time and cut through um, those one and a half inch sections. So then you're going to glue those down onto the base piece and up onto the top piece. Then there's also a little trim piece that goes around, but that allows your bell to hang in there. By having that angle piece, it then sits right up on the roof line and sits right down. You can go ahead and glue it in place about three quarters of an inch back from that front edge. I've then also taken the last piece of the pencil. Um, this is just some ruler accents that I have in the kits that I've applied to the edge. I've glued this guy in place um, because I didn't want to hit it down on the walls for when it explodes open. So I have it up here on the gable. I've taken one of the accent pieces that's in the paper itself, covered it over with a black circle so that's the entrance into the birdhouse and put the perch and that's on the roof. Now on the outside of the birdhouse itself there's also windows and doors. There's a door, piece of door um, chipboard that's cut to the size it needs to be for the door and I've covered that with wood grain paper that I've inked and then I've just made little black panes on the windows. The same on, these are single windows on each side and a double window, or on the front, on each side of the door on the front and a double window on each side. I've used the wood grain paper, put the little black panes in it, and then put the accent blue <coughs> trim back behind. You can add other embellishments, the flowers, all that sort of thing, whatever um, kind of embellishments you want to add on there. Um, I thought it would be really cute to write on here, flight school, since this is a birdhouse. Um, and so then the roof just holds everything closed until you lift the roof off, and then the school bursts at the seams. So many of our schools these days are doing that, exactly that. They're so full. Um, but you can add any further embellishments, child's name, grade, that sort of thing that you want. 
and then on the inside when it bursts open as I noted on these you can add stars I'm gonna cut smaller stars that are yellow that fit in the center so they get their gold stars these four by six tags um, I'm gonna be adding um, pattern paper to them some little ribbons that sort of thing embellish them up so that then the photographs can be added you can also add pattern paper in the, the pencil tags as well um, but I'll leave that up to you as to how much embellishment you want to do the last thing I did is I took some of the cork paper which is the same paper I used down here originally and I cut a square and triangles to cover over um, the black cardstock <coughs> for these um, uh, fin attachments but fun project bright elementary school colors perfect way to um, store all those memories of those fun school days the perfect September birdhouse thanks so much